hi everybody welcome to part two of the maple costume um this is the building of the cage crinoline this was something i kind of just made up along the way well not totally i had no experience making a cage crinoline so i watched quite a few videos i'll link a couple below i watched kira lee cosplays video farthingale's video and i kind of mashed the two together yeah i mean my first one i thought i was i was pretty happy with it in the end i would recommend watching as many videos as you can to come up with your own way and if you're doing a historical costume and you want to make a cage crinoline i forget i think it's truly victorian it has a pretty good pattern that you can buy so I would just go straight there. I wasn't really doing historical, so I figured I'd do something slightly different. Anyway, um, without further ado, here is how I made the cage crinoline. Got something in the mail today. Ordered this on Friday, and it came today. Oops. Hoop steel. Now, to be honest, it's a little wider than, I knew it was gonna be about a centimeter. I knew that. It's 10 millimeters, so that's a centimeter. Um, it's a little heavier than I think I want for this. That's okay. I do have um, something else. But some tips and these little tipping plier bits for it. I have the pliers. Never used any of this. I just uh, have lots of plans. Aha. I got this kit to make a corset, but this stuff, this is the steel bones. Um, 10 meters of it, so it's the same amount, and this came with some spiral steel, and I ordered these pliers and then they come with these little tipping I'm not really sure what they're called little bits that go on the pliers to put your tips on so I think I might use the thinner stuff for this hoop because it's just a like a light cage um anyways let's see how it goes After comparing the flexibility of the two products side by side, I decided to go with the hoop steel after all, because it was just as flexible, if not more flexible, as the steel boning. Plus I purchased the bias tape for the hoop steel casing to fit a 10mm size and the thinner 6mm steel boning would be swimming in the casing. I measured the elastic waistband to the waist measurement and stitched it in a circle. Then I marked the placement for the eight tapes by folding the waistband in half one way, then again in half the other way, and then equal distance in between the quarters. I pinned first, then marked with a pencil crayon. Prismacolor makes great marking pencils, assuming you don't need the marks to come out, that is. I then stitched up the sides of my bias tape. I needed to wind a bobbin because this will probably take quite a bit of thread. Yes, I bought some extra bobbins, more than I probably need. Since industrial machines will wind your bobbin as you sew, I took advantage of that. The hoop channel was a bit loose, so I decided it would be better to sew the folded side as well for a snug fit. Plus I thought it would be more balanced. Okay, hit a snag. Um, these tin synapses are dull. Um, they're my husband's. Like what? Look at this. Can you see this? I don't know if it's... And look, they're rusty. 
so I had a really, really hard time cutting this tip. I managed to do it, but it wasn't easy. Got my goggles on here, safety goggles. Um, so I got these tiny little bits of flying metal. I don't know if you can see those. Anyway, um, so I think I'm gonna be off to Home Depot tomorrow to buy a new pair. My husband can have his back. <laughs> Um, but I'm going to try tipping this one end and see how that goes. I struggled to get the tipping dies on because I didn't realize there was a clip holding the pliers closed, just in case you need that information. Here we go. Looks good. I'll do it again. Just give it a nice little. Yay. Oh no. Maybe I didn't squeeze it hard enough. I don't know. Go put it back on there. Not gonna lie, my left hand is useless. It's only good for carrying a purse. Let's see if that's more secure. Ah, much better. That useless left hand. Okay. Well, <laughs> we have one end. Uh, until tomorrow, I'll work on the tapes, I guess, later. <laughs> okay, this was really satisfying. I didn't know that the bias tape was going to iron out so nicely. Wow. <laughs> Apparently those weren't the only tin snips in the house. There was at least two other pairs. So I got one barely used. In fact, it looks like it's never cut any tin before. I had to go outside, brave the skunks to the shed to get him. And then number two. These look well worn, so we'll see. I would like these pair to be the ones that I keep only because these are my dad's. Anyway, uh, we'll give them a try and those other ones are going in the garbage. <laughs> okay, so we are going to measure this at 66 inches plus four for the overlap. So two inches on either side. And um, so I'm going to measure. How did I come to that number? My daughter came down. I put huge length of hoop wire around her until she felt like it was the right size. That's how. <laughs> We're going to try the vintage tool first. I don't even know what brand it is. Wiss? W-I-S-S? -S? I think so. Anyway, let's see if this works. All right, tipping. The bits go flying, by the way. Much better. These ones will be next, but I'm not ready for that, so we'll see. It'll be experiment. 
didn't know I was going to do a tin snip review, did you? Stick this on the end first. Flip it over and do that again, too. You never know. Ooh, it did flatten it a little more. And now it's stuck. Ugh. Now, I'm going to stick it into the channel. So I did a whole bunch of this, and I hope it goes through. Ooh, it's so pretty. Well, so far it fits, which is nice. I mean, barely. Um, it is a bit tight. I have to next time sew a little bit more off to the side. There's a few parts where I got a little narrow, but it still fits. I pressed this really nice and now it's all wrinkled. Yeah, nice. Hey. Let's see. You know what I hate? Poking myself with pin. Oh yeah. It's so much better for now. I mean, it's just temporary. But here's the hoop. That is way too big to see. Oh, there you go. So it's going to be about 18 inches long, the hoop. So this will be the bottom one. <sighs> These are the tapes. They hang down from the elastic waistband. So I'm going to make them 18 inches um, total after seam allowance. So probably do half inch seam allowance. So I'll cut it at 19. What I don't mention here is I was going to double the hoop tape like in the cage crinoline video by Farthingales, but I didn't buy enough twill tape. I had to do just the length I needed with one channel on the bottom. The double length would have allowed for multiple hoop channels along the tape, but instead I resigned myself to having to tack each hoop on instead. It's something I did see others do in some videos, but man it took a long time. So what I did was hem each tape at the top and made a channel, or basically a double hem, at the bottom. I only hemmed the top because the tape frays so badly and I didn't want them pulling off. Then I attached them all to the pencil crayon markings I made along the waistband. The bottom hoop channel was a bit tight, so I pulled the hoop through using a small hemostat. It worked really well. What I didn't film was the confusing and more difficult than I expected part where I figured out all the hoop lengths. I messed up a couple times and wasted some hoop wire and at this point I really regretted the decision to tack all the other hoops on instead of buying more twill tape to make casings. It was a very long and fiddly process to pin the hoops in the right place. I ended up getting very frustrated and had to put it on my dress form which had a 4 inch bigger waist. After that, the placement of the hoops went on much faster though because the IKEA thing I was using didn't hold anything steady. Also, the idea of hand tacking each hoop casing to the tapes went out the window after the first one. There was no way that was happening. I took the hoop wire out of each casing while keeping it in place as much as I could and machine stitched the top and bottom of each casing. It worked out really well, actually, and saved me a ton of time. I have to admit here though, it looks like a real mess. You can barely tell what is going on. Um, I did, however, measure each one to make sure they were in the same spot going down each tape and they actually weren't so I don't know it's a mix of measuring and placing well on the dress form is how it went together mm -hmm. 
I did hand stitch the casings closed where the hoops overlapped. There was no getting around that part. In the end, I had to shorten the cage by a good six inches. It would have stuck out too much under the skirt if I didn't. I did this by tacking up the bottom of the tape. If I ever needed to lengthen them again, I could undo it and maybe place another hoop in between. I was pretty happy with the results though. I'd never made one. I didn't really have many instructions other than the videos I watched. And next time I probably would buy some instructions. I didn't end up filming any of the skirt construction. I measured the circumference of the hoop and added about 5 inches so it wouldn't look too stretched. Otherwise, it's just a straight width of fabric where I sewed the sides. I didn't worry about the length too much except I wanted it to be longer than I needed because the hem was going to be done in a special way. The waistband is half elasticated and the skirt is gathered into it. There are many simple skirt videos around and to be honest, I just made it so it was, I wasn't really able to explain step by step. I should probably also mention it didn't go as smoothly as it sounds. I made it too big at first and making the waistband half elastic was harder than I thought it would be. I'll save the hemming for the next video. It was a pretty unique way to hem and we wanted to have the effect of dripping maple syrup. I have to admit I had a lot of fun doing it. Thanks for watching my second video on the maple cosplay. I will have a blog about this posted on my blog, Heather's Creative Adventures, uh, at some point after this. If you wanted to follow along that way, you can. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. There's two more videos in this series. I do the vest in one and the hemming of the skirt and headpiece in the other. Uh, hemming of the skirt sounds a little weird, but it is kind of unique, so it's worth a watch. Thanks everybody. Bye for now.